Today we have a Series 2 controller for repair, but not just any Series 2 controller, this is the one and only Vcuda's Series 2 controller, and it broke in such a weird way, I think it might make for a fun video. Let's tear it down and see what's going on. I've seen a lot of broken stuff, but this is the first for me. This little connector that mates both boards broke off and it took all but one pad with it. This probably happened because the connector was seized and there was no anchoring support on the PCB to help absorb that extra force of taking the two PCBs apart, so instead it just took all the pads off with it. Before we get started with this repair, I'd like to thank Hako for sponsoring my channel. They sent over this beautifully packaged 3-in-1 soldering station that has a hot air pencil, soldering pencil, and a desoldering gun. This beast of a station will see a lot of use on this channel, and I cannot thank Hako enough for their support. Let's break in this brand new tip by removing the old pads from the connector. I could easily reuse the connector, but the pads not so much. Since the pads on the PCB are gone, we need something to solder to. In order to accomplish this, we'll scrape away some green solder mask from the PCB to expose some copper underneath. I get a lot of comments saying I should use a fiberglass pen to remove the solder mask instead of a surgical blade or sandpaper, but honestly I prefer the precision of a scalpel, and I also prefer the coverage that sandpaper offers, plus I absolutely hate getting fiberglass splinters, and I just feel like that fiberglass pen will allow that to happen more often, and I'm just going to avoid that as long as I can, because they're the worst thing ever. With part of our makeshift pads exposed, it's time to prep them by tinning them with solder. This will make the next step a lot easier. To complete the pads, I'll be using very thin strands of wire. I usually use 30 gauge wire for these types of repairs, but 30 gauge wire proved to be too thick for this kind of repair, and I had to resort to stripping off some insulation on some scrap wire that I have lying around and using the individual strands. We'll see how this works out. In order to keep these wires somewhat in place, I'll use a very small amount of epoxy.
The connector can now be carefully soldered into place. Since the jumper wires are so small, it's important to keep the dwell time as short as possible, otherwise there's a chance the wires could transfer the heat and unsolder themselves on the other side. Alright, now we can very lightly press the two PCBs together for a quick test. I'm kind of surprised that this worked out first try. I thought for sure I'd have to go back and touch up a wire, fearing that it unsoldered itself after I soldered the other side of it. Kind of sucks you can't see through the connector, so this was just something I had to deal with, but it worked out. Uh, just go ahead and ignore that left stick. It's acting as if it's being pulled down. This is because the drift fix PCB is installed and I don't think it's properly calibrated. After carefully separating the two PCBs, I went ahead and caked the connector with epoxy. This will give it that strength it's missing and also prevent it from breaking in the future. With it fully assembled, I want to go ahead and test it one more time just to make sure all the buttons are still working, nothing's pinched, nothing weird's happening, or anything like that. I also went ahead and calibrated the left stick, so now it's dead center. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you again to Hako for sponsoring my channel. It means a lot to me that you guys sent me this station and I cannot wait to see what it's capable of. Also, thank you to Vicuda for sending me the controller to repair. It was a lot of fun. If you like this kind of stuff, be sure to subscribe or not. And I will see you next time. Thanks again.